Welcome to Global Pillar Ministry, a platform that exists to bring believers back to their Bibles and prepare them to become efficient in the kingdom of God. Join me as I welcome your host, Dr. Levin Damisa. Praise God. Hallelujah. Welcome to tonight. Shall we pray? Father, I want to thank you, Lord. I want to appreciate you. We thank you for tonight. We thank you for your message. We ask, Lord, that God will speak to us even tonight in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Happy New Year once again to our numerous listeners and viewers. And I want to especially thank you for all the birthday wishes of last Saturday. It was it's good to turn a year older, healthy, and uh, by the grace of God, strong. So I want to thank you for the gift. Thank you for the offerings that are coming in into the work to support the work <clears throat> of God. We are still continuing with our family dynamic series and we are trusting God that this year will not be an ordinary year to every family. We are on a mission to rescue at least a thousand families from the grip of darkness, from the grip of societal influence. We are on a rescue mission, at least a thousand homes with the multiplier effect be saved, be delivered from crisis because as we learned in our previous episode, God deals with family. Even for Christ to be born, he needed a family. For John the Baptist, he needed a family. Every move of God is tied to family system. And that is why the, the devil is fighting families. But we are saying, no, God want your family redeemed, restored, and replenished. For the journey ahead is great. Praise the name of the Lord. We begin tonight by our destiny confession. Very simple, very easy title of the lesson, you're going to say, as for me and my house, we will serve the living God. As for me and my house, we will serve the living God. Now, today's episode, we're going to be looking at securing your family destiny, looking at the life of Priscilla and Aquilia, or Aquilia and Priscilla. We are, we are trying to, in this segment, we're looking at Bible marriages and see what we can learn from them, what we can adapt from them. The good, the bad, and the ugly, they will all be looked into in this, in this episodes. We are trusting God that the word of God is given by inspiration so that we can get instruction that you may live a complete life, that you may lose nothing in the scheme of things. God does not want you shortchange. Amen. Get that from me. God does not want his children shortchange. And so he makes available every information we need to excel in that which he has called us to do. Amen. Now, Joshua chapter 24, verse 14 and 16. Joshua was talking to the children of Israel. Say, now therefore fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth. And put away the gods that your father served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt and serve you the Lord. And if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, choose you this day whom ye will serve, whether the gods which your father served that were on the other side of the flood or the gods of the Amorite in whose land ye dwell. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And the people answered and said, God forbid that we should forsake the Lord to serve other gods. Amen. You see, every family has to come to a point of making a decision of which God they want to serve and how they want to serve that God. Joshua knew the imperative of serving God with his family. And so as a leader, judging from the last two episodes, we look at rising for your family, how Joseph rose for his family, how Joseph stood in the place of the altar for his wife. Because we knew from that story that after God, after the angel of God visited Mary, we never had a dealing of God with Mary. God was dealing with Joshua, with, with Joseph. They run to escape to Egypt, they return to Nazareth. Every dealing was with Joseph. Why? He rose for his family. So in that spirit, God wants you to take a position that will secure your family destiny. And there are things that you need to learn to secure your family destiny. Why? Because you are made in the image and the likeness of God. Joshua knew this, and so he missed, he, he didn't miss words when he came to the, at the point of, towards the point of the end of his career, towards the end of his life. He assembled the children of Israel. 
He assembled them and said, Come, the gods of your fathers on the other side of the floor in the river Euphrates. That was even before God called Abraham. And then the gods you serve in Egypt. He said, But now choose ye this day who you are going to serve. That means no man can afford to be neutral. In spiritual journey, you cannot be neutral. If you are neutral, you will lose on both sides. You must take a stand for God or against God. And so Joshua said, choose ye this day. He could not be dissuaded by the crowd. He knew better. And so if you know better, you must do your best. Amen. If you know better, you must strive to do your best. And that's what Joshua did. And to, to understand why it's important to secure your family, you may say, but I'm not married. But I'm telling you this email there tonight, that you must not be married to take that position. Your heart disposition is, is what God looks at. And I will prove that to you when you go to the book of Genesis chapter 18. Genesis chapter 18 verse 19. God was speaking concerning Abraham. He said, for I know him that he will command his children and his household after him and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment, that the Lord may bring upon Abraham that which he has spoken of him. Now, this was the time where God wanted to destroy the land of Sodom and Gomorrah, and God said no. Even though Abraham had no child of his own, even though Abraham has not received the, the child of promise, he said, but I will not hide this from Abraham. Why? He said, because I know he will command his children and his household after him. That means God already saw the state of the heart of Abraham as a man who was going to secure the destiny of his family, as a man who was going to take the side of God in his family matters. Long before Abraham had a child, God said, I know you will command. So, you may, you may, so are you a single person? Are you yet to be married? And you are still saying, this does not concern me. No. God can still enter covenant with you because he knows that you are already thinking you are going to secure your family. Praise the name of the Lord. And so God said, will I hide this from him? When, you mind, when your mind is made up to serve God with your family, you enjoy special privileges from God. When your mind is made up to serve God with your family, you enjoy special privileges from God. Serving God with your family as limitless blessing. And that is why in this new year, as you set up your goals, as you set up, as you go into your retreat to have retreat for goals, goal setting, I plead with you. Have serving God with your family as a major goal that you are going to embark on this year. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, we have in, the, in our series, we're going to be looking at a man called Aquila and Priscilla, a couple rather, in the book of Acts of Apostle, in, in, we first hear about them in Acts of Apostle, but let's look at Luke, Romans chapter, in Romans 16, 3 to 5. Apostle Paul was writing, he said, Greet Priscilla and Aquila, my helpers in Christ Jesus, who are for my life laid down their own necks, unto whom not only I give thanks, but also all the churches of the Gentiles. Likewise, greet the church that is in their house. Salute my well-beloved Epenetus, who is the first fruit of Achaia unto Christ. The book of Romans chapter 16, we have dealt with you on the Roman series. You can get a copy. Now, when Apostle Paul began to list the Hall of Fame, the helpers of destiny, those that helped him in the Hall of Fame, first among them, he, he began to mention people that, after mentioning Phoebe, he went on to mention Aquila and Priscilla. And I took time to look at what was peculiar or what are the peculiarities of this couple? Why are they unique in the Bible? Now, it may interest you to know that Aquila and Priscilla were mentioned say, about six times in the Bible. And in each of these six times, they were mentioned together. God does not make mistakes. God does not uh, mix words. Nothing is by coincidence with God. It means they serve God as a couple. When you hear Aquila, you hear Priscilla. When you hear Priscilla, you hear Aquila. They, were a, they give us a picture 
they gave us an example that a family can serve God together. That a husband and a wife can be dedicated to God and still get result. Praise the name of the Lord. That it means that, and the Bible says they were commended because Apostle Paul said they were his helpers. Now, what that tells us tonight is that in the dealings of God for every minister, you are sent to support a minister. Praise the name of the Lord. You are sent to support a family. You are sent to support a ministry. You are sent to support a vision. You are sent to support a mission. You are sent to support a cause. God does not save a family without a purpose. The Bible says to those he predestinated, to those he know, he predestinated them save them, justify them, and empower them. Why? For a cause. And so, at the beginning of this year, I want you to take a position that God, I want to be a vessel in your hand. I want to be an instrument in your hand. And as you do that, God will strengthen you in the name of Jesus. Now, Aprilia and Chrysalia, we came across them for the first time in Acts of Apostle chapter 18. In Acts 18, the Bible says, And after these things, Paul departed from Athens and came to Corinth, verse 2, and found a certain Jew named Aquila, born in Portus, lately come from Italy, with his wife Priscilla, because that Claudius had commanded all Jews to depart from Rome, and came unto them. And because he was of the same craft, he abode with them and wrought, for, the, for by their occupation they were tent makers. This is not the first time we are having family business. Today is not is, is not uncommon or it's common to see families, something, something, uh, sons, Akinses and sons, Levins and sons, Deborah and daughters. You know, it's not new. The Bible says a man in the Bible, Aquila and Priscilla, had a family business, and they were tent makers. And to relate it to the language of today, they were they were like civil engineers. Now. It, it, it gives a picture that a family can actually run business in, in God's way and still support God's work without collapse of family values. It means that a husband and wife can still run a business together and still serve God. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, you could see from that scripture that one, Aquila and Priscilla were lovers of God. Now, Having come from Italy to Corinth, Apostle Paul ran into them. And because Apostle Paul was also a tent maker, there was a connection. There was a connection between them. And that connection is so strong or was so strong that Apostle Paul abode, abode he stayed with them. And that became the beginning of a lifelong relationship. God does not bring people your way for nothing. God does not bring people your way for naught. No. God does not bring people your way by accident. Every man that God brings your way is tied to a purpose. Every woman God brings your way is tied to a purpose. It is the abuse of that purpose that causes crisis. It is not understanding the purpose of why God sent men to you that bring about abuse. The Lord will give us insight in the name of Jesus. Now the Bible says that Aquila and Priscilla were lovers of God. They were hardworking couples. They were homeowners. And they had a church in their home. Now there's something they did that is very, very striking. In that book of Acts chapter 18, when you go to verse 24, you begin to see how useful this couple were in the hand of God. Now, I want to let you know that it is not mandatory that everybody will be in the limelight in the ministry. Every believer will not be in the limelight, but you are commanded to shine as light in the domain you occupy, in the corner you occupy, in the business you occupy, in the office you occupy. You are called to be light. You are called to be a benchmark staff. You are called to be a benchmark personnel. You are called to be excellent performer in your duty. Why? Because you are the light and the salt of the earth. That was the disposition of Aquilia and Priscilla. The Bible says, when the Bible says in verse 24, and a certain Jew named Apollos, 
born in Alexandria, as Egypt, an, an eloquent man and mighty in, in the scriptures, came to Ephesus. This man was instructed in the way of the Lord and being fervent in the spirit, he spake and taught diligently the things of God, knowing only the baptism of John. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue, whom when Aquila and Priscilla had heard, they took him unto them and expounded unto him the way of the Lord more perfectly. Praise the name of the Lord. Now you can see the value of this couple here. The entire church and they met a man called Apollos who was mighty in scripture. And they sat down, they listened to him. They didn't despise him. They didn't look down on him. They listened to him and the Bible says something. They took him aside. They saw the gaps. They acknowledged the gap. They saw that he was not as deep as he was, even though he was gifted. That brings to understanding that gift need to be developed. Talent need to be trained. Talent need to be owned. You don't say I'm a talented artist and you go to sleep. You don't say I'm a talented singer and you stop doing voice training. You don't say I'm a talented writer and you stop reading. You don't say I'm a talented preacher and you stop praying and studying. Every talent needs to be developed. So when they saw that gap in Apollos, the Bible said they took him aside. They had deep knowledge of the scriptures, yet they were humble. They stayed on their calling. And what was their calling? To help other ministers. To secure your family destiny, stay in your calling. You don't need to dabble. They didn't pick up the Bible and say, we are going to be preacher. We know it more than Apollos. No, rather, they took Apollos aside. He dwelt with them for some time and they built him up. It's like they brought him to their Bible school. It's like bringing him into tutorials. It's like bringing him into a place of, 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 of tutelage. And the Bible says they stay on their calling. They were humble enough to stay with the congregation. Why? They saw potential in Apollo. And I want to let you know, as I begin to round up, that this Apollo became so powerful, Apollo became so great in his calling, that in the church of Corinth, you will see in 1 Corinthians chapter 3, that the church of Corinth will not begin to say, I'm of Apollos, I am of Paul. That tells you the multiplier effect of the effort of the effort of Aquila and Priscilla. They so much developed his gift. They so much helped him that he became a preacher with many converts. I want to ask you to, tonight, who are you investing in? What are you investing on this year? And by the end of 2024, what will you say you have done for the kingdom advancement? What, who will you say you have influenced positively for the gospel of Jesus? Who will you say you have touched? Permit me to say here that Apollos becomes so mighty in scripture that the Bible says he, he, he made mighty many converts among the Gentiles and the Jews. To such that in the church of Corinth, some now say, I'm of Apollo, I'm of Paul. And Paul now said, come on, you are Cana. You don't need to say I'm Apollo. Apollo, I plant, Apollo watered, and God gave the increase. Meaning that Paul even came to understand that Apollo's gift was not a gift to be looked down on. Why? Because a couple choose to invest in the right person. I want to challenge you tonight as I begin to round up that as a couple, as a family, make up your mind to secure the destiny of your family this year. Make up your mind to stay in your calling. Make up your mind to be humble enough to be a partaker of where, where God wants you to serve. In the local church, in the local assembly, be that couple, be that family that can be looked up to as a son or as a family of consolation. Praise the name of the Lord. In 2024, serve God as a couple, as a family. Identify a project. Identify a pastor. Identify a teacher. A potential youth and invest in their life. You will not lose your reward. You see that you can serve God quietly without making noise. You can serve God perfect, quietly without causing confusion in the, in the system in the church. You don't need to make noise. Aquila and Priscilla, they had a church in their house. They had a church in their home. Why? They were dedicated to serving God with their wealth and their gift. Many people don't want to serve God with their gift, not Aquila and Priscilla. Are you an engineer? Are you an architect? Are you, a, are you an event manager? 
Is your family into medical business? I want to let you know, serve God with your business. Serve God in the place you are. Serve God in your profession. The Bible speaks of Luke as the beloved physician. He, he, he served God with his gift as a physician. You can serve God quietly. I want to ask you tonight, what will you be known for in the kingdom in 2024 and beyond? God has many ways of bringing people into your life. I want you to watch out. Your skill set will attract the right people into your life. Your temperance will attract the right people into your life. To secure your life, to secure your family in 2024, let your soft skill, let your skill set attract the right people into your life. Meaning that what? Don't waste time on irrelevances. Depe develop your gift. Develop your trade. Develop your talent. The right skill set attract the right people into your life. And it has never failed. Age to age from different generations. When you develop the right talent, the right people are attracted to you. So in this year, I want to encourage you. Invest in yourself, develop yourself, and let your family serve God with your resources, with your skill set, and you will never regret it. In Jesus' name, amen. Father, we thank you for tonight. Thank you for your word. Help us to serve you, to secure our family in the place of service. Because when we serve in your presence, we are secure. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Join us again next week for another episode of a, of a wonderful couple that also serve God with what they had and experience God in a different dimension. Keep a date with us. Shalom. Thank you for listening to today's episode on The Word with Dr. Levin presented by Global Pillar Ministry. Join us every Saturday for the undiluted teachings of The Word. You can watch previous and current episodes on our YouTube channel facebook and instagram channels you can access the channel using the handle the word with levin please turn on notifications to join us every saturday by 9 p.m listen to our audio messages on google podcast spotify and apple podcast by simply searching for the word with levin for inquiries please call 0903 470 0607 or send an email to info at globalpillarministry.org or visit our website on www.globalpillarministry.org To support the Global Pillar Ministry, please send donations to GT Bank PLC, account number 074-579-5640. God bless you. See you next week.